Today on Business Success in Six with Stacy, I have Tom Kennard here from Kennard Heating and Cooling in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Tom, thanks for jumping on. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Absolutely. I know your time is valuable. It has been one hot summer and you are helping people stay cool and comfortable right now. So if you don't mind, I'd love to talk to you about your business, Kennard Heating and Cooling. Is that okay? Yeah, that's great. All right, here we go. When people ask you how you describe your business, how do you describe Canard Heating and Cooling? Uh, I, I always say we're an HVAC company or heating and air conditioning company that serves residential and light commercial customers uh, throughout uh, Northeastern Wisconsin, which includes Brown, Kewanee, and Door Counties. Uh, we do go outside of those counties. We have customers outside of those counties that uh, have us go down there, but our target area is Door Kewanee. And like I say, we do residential, which, whether it's say furnaces and air conditioners or boilers and side armors. We're doing a lot of heat pumps now has also come in, into play with uh, some of the Wisconsin Focus on Energy rebates and uh, the tax credits that are available to customers. So that's coming into play too. So we do a wide variety of uh, HVAC. So you... Are you able to help people with some of those credits and kind of guide them? Yeah, we work on it. That was my fun this morning as I, I was trying to figure out all the credits available and what, you know, there's lots that goes into it. You have to figure out, make sure you're choosing the right furnace, the right air conditioner, the right coils and everything else. So you got the right numbers to match up. So it, it's set to go for your customers to be eligible. As much as possible, I try to help them. Um, sometimes it gets into a pretty good spider web of, uh, uh, of confusion that you have to go down to. So. I bet, but how value added is that? Well, thank you for that little extra question that I asked. So what were your plans when you started your business and how have they changed? You've been in the industry since 1990, right? What you want to talk about your experience? Well, you know, it was great. I went to WWTC from across for a year and uh, came back and started working at uh, uh, a local heating and air conditioning contractor, which we still have a good relationship with. And uh, I worked there for, tried a couple, I tried the wholesale side of things. I tried a couple different sides of the industry, but I still enjoyed being out in the field and being with the customers. Uh, so in 1998, I uh, made the decision from a uh, personal perspective. I always wanted to be in my own business. My parents were farmers and, uh, you know, entrepreneurs. So you're used to being out and about and doing your own thing. So uh, I decided to uh, open up my own business and it worked well for my family. My wife was home with two kids at the time, so she could help out and on the business side of things. And, uh, and also I could adjust my schedule accordingly to make it available when my kids had activities and stuff like that. And I, you know, and it's hard to say that being in business, but it, it, I have, it has been able to afford me that. Um, so in 1998, we decided to open up the doors. I uh, bought a company out and with base materials and everything out of Reedsville, Wisconsin, and uh, bought my first truck and uh, brought it all back up to Green Bay and opened up my business by myself. So, Wow, that is incredible. And you have two locations. One is by appointment only in Sturgeon Bay, correct? Correct. correct. And the Green Bay location is like a mile. It's actually in New Franken, right? Yeah, correct. Correct. Oh my gosh. Awesome. Oh, that is a little screen back. So, so yeah, yeah. we have those two locations and uh, you can set up appointments in the Sturgeon Bay office anytime you want. I'm in and out of that office throughout the summertime, especially a lot. Um, and the Green Bay office, uh, we got hours here from uh, eight to four. Wow. Very, very cool. It sounds like you're an extremely hard entrepreneur who learned from their family too. Farmers are, that's a tough job as well, huh? Yes, you know, best schooling in the school are docs. Wow. So what what is the biggest way you impact the community? I know I appreciate, especially in Wisconsin, heating and cooling, but can you expand upon that a little bit? Well, we try to use sports as a big thing. Um, you know, if you want to say actually from that side of point, how we impact them, use sports is a huge one. Um, we try to sponsor as many as we can and pick and choose here and there. We can't sponsor everything, obviously. Uh, there are some uh, regional cancer things that we do. Um, we Early this summer, we did uh, sting cancer where we served the food at a car show. And uh, that uh, we were able to raise $1,200 for that. Uh, but a variety of different things we do and a variety of different charities and golf outings and different things like that. Um, the biggest thing what I always say is how I impact my community. And what I found is making sure I take care of my families that work for me, you know, and making sure that I, I can probably put a good product out there for my customers and that um, I'm 
can run a good business so I can take care of my employees and pay them accordingly with proper benefits and everything and making sure they're they're taken care of. So that's one of the biggest things that I want to make sure I'm always a steward of is, is the, the not, and I hate to use the word employees, but my coworkers and the people that help me out run this business and make sure I'm a good steward to them because if I'm not a good steward to them, I, you know, that I don't have a business is what it comes down to. So that just gave me goosebumps. That's absolutely incredible that you are focusing on those families that you're taking care of. And I actually loved how you said, I mean, they are your employees, but they're also your coworkers and, and yeah. creating that great environment for them is just so important. And that's going to pass down to the, the customers too, that you're all caring for. Well, it, it's, it's kind of interesting. You know, my, 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 you know, I have a son that works for me now. My daughter had worked for me in the past. Um, and, you know, it's so funny because these customers, some of these customers have been with me for almost, you know, uh, pushing 30 years now. And, you know, the, the, some of the customers say to me, I remember when Ashton was born or when Brett was born or when Trevor was born. And, you know, and they'll say to the kids, I remember when you were a little kid and your dad was telling me about this story when he was over working on my furnace or air conditioner or this and that, the other thing. And they always smile about it because they usually remember the story of, you know about it so you know that's that's my customers are my family also and I take great pride in them and in pride in taking care of them yeah. uh, and I take pride in. you can definitely tell you care that's wonderful so again you've been in business a long time what is one challenge that you have faced that other business owners could learn from well I think if you go back to the early days um I think one of the the uh, things I learned from back then looking, looking back today is, uh, pacing myself, <laughs> um, you know, uh, I want it to be bigger and bigger and bigger and better and better and better and more trucks on the road and everything else like that. Um, just, uh, uh, and that was probably a little bit of youth in me that was thinking that, um, so pacing yourself is, is one of the fastest things you learn being in business. Uh, the, now, nowadays in the last 10 years, it's, you know, and I hate to beat the drum, but it's the same thing as employees, you know, and, uh, drawing people, first of all, drawing people to our field and then trying to get them educated and get them up to speed to be out in the field and working on and taking care of the customers that, you know, uh, in the different situations is, is a, a diverse, it's not just one thing you're doing all the time. You are doing a lot of different things. You have to know the whole sheet metal side of it. You have to know all the airflow side of it. You have to know the gas side of it. You have to know the electrical side of it. You have to know for a boiler side of things. You know, you have to know, understand CO. You have to understand, you know, carbon monoxide and, you know, refrigeration. I didn't even touch on refrigeration and all that. So there's, there's a lot of things you have to learn and understand. And it's usually a five-year process to you get up to speed uh, to know and feel comfortable in the field uh, what, what you're doing in different situations. Wow, that is so much. That's overwhelming. Now, I've got to imagine that training that has got to be just such a process as well, huh? It is. And we really push continuing education for the guys. And, you know, a lot of people in our field uh, don't graduate from any type of HVAC school. Um, we do have one locally, um, but a lot of guys don't graduate from that. So a lot of it is on the job training. Um, you know, and we try to put training pro programs out there. I'm blessed. I have some uh, people that work for me that have been in the industry longer than I have. So, which is really nice to, to, um, to help educate the guys in the field and, and show them. Um, our industry has changed. You know, we laughed uh, some, you know, some of our guys that have been in the business line uh, talk about how we used to stand at the sheet metal table and scribe out all of our sheet metal and in a flat sheet and then cut it all out by hand and then bend it all up and fold it all put together in the different shapes and objects and everything else to get to for the ductwork in people's basements. And now you sit at a computer and you just enter it all on a computer and the laser or the plasma table cuts it all up for you. And we laugh about it because, you know, it's, it's just that that portion of the change so much for us, but that's where the new generation coming in. That's one of the things they pick up the fastest is because they can enter it all on the computer faster than I can, because they just understand it. And, you know, not that I'm computer illiterate, but that's just how they were raised. Gosh, isn't that interesting how much times have changed, but Flip side of that, imagine if you ask them to start cutting out everything and putting it together, right? Totally. That was our number one problem uh, we had a couple of years ago until we bought the, the plasma table is trying to explain and educate 
explain over and over and over again how to do all that because you got to picture it in your mind first of all before you can lay it all out on a flat piece of metal and then scribe it all out and be accurate with your measurements and then cut it all out appropriately and, and there's a lot of tricks and a lot of different things and it, it was to the point it was just me and one other guy that could actually do that and um there was certain feasible to keep going. So, you know, that was a huge, huge asset. It was a big expense, but it was a huge asset for our company to be able to do that. Sure, I've got to imagine, yeah, if you're training people and there's an error too, it's a very expensive error. So it, yeah. in the long run, that investment, probably a great thing. Although there yeah. is something to be said about being able to use your hands and be able to build and understand that side of things. And I feel like a yeah. lot of people are losing that too. And it, it's such a valuable skill, so. It is, it is, but there's also other things that come into play in it. You know, our industry, you know, that was a very technical thing maybe back 20 years ago. Now it's not so much, but now there's also a lot more technical things in our industry that wasn't there 20 years ago that it is there now. Sure. Well, thank you for that. So what does the future look like to you? And do you have an exit plan? You said you have a son that's working with you in the business. What What does the future look like? Uh, um, you know, I, I you know, I, that's a good question. Uh, you know, I was thinking about that earlier today. You know, and it's it's definitely something that's on the back of my mind. We got several different options. Um, you know, I'm in my early 50s, so I still got plenty of time to go. It's not something that I, I would ever exit from the company at any point in time. Um, I don't put pressure on my my kids at all. I let them they know when they feel comfortable and when I would feel comfortable with the situation that the door is open there. Um, but I don't want to put pressure. I don't want to pigeonhole them. I don't want them to be here for me or feel that they, they don't have other options in this world. So, you know, we got a couple ideas in our heads, what, what direction we want to go into. Um, a lot of it is based off of manpower and what we can do down the years to come, um, which, you know, also economy, our business is also economy driven. Um, we've been blessed for the last five, uh, well, probably seven years now with a, a booming building industry and, you know, a huge home market and stuff like that. Um, um, you know, with people with extra disposable income and, uh, you know, and stuff like that. So, um, you know, we'll see as the years come here, you know, um, there's a lot of different variables in there and you can come up with the best made plan. And I think you always have to have three different plans in your head, what the future holds, you know, right now we're just sitting tight with where we're at. We're happy where we are at with sales, um, making sure that we're putting the best group of guys and the best product out there. I shouldn't say guys, best group, group of people out there um, to make sure we're putting our best product out there um, and, and refining that whole side of things and making sure that it, as you know, the next year or so. Wow. So cool. Yes. You definitely have time. So <laughs> time to plan, right? Exactly. So Tom, my final question for you today is all subjects open. What inspires you most? Well, what inspires me the most? I think the number one thing, you know, it changes over the years what, what inspires you, you know, your family, you know, there's so many different things that inspire you between your family, your friends, and then you're also, you know, uh, my customers, you know, and I think the number one thing is is inspiring me is, is my customers to making sure that they're, you know, I always say we don't live in a perfect glass house, you know, and our windows aren't squeaky clean, um, you know, but I always feel if there's an issue, you know, they can come and talk to me and we'll handle it. You know, and that's the number one thing I think I take pride in is, is my customer report. And, uh, you know, we don't have to advertise a lot. We don't say, you know, a lot out there is trying to command new business in. Everything is word of mouth for the most part. Um, so I think that's where I'm the happiest to make sure the customers and, and that's what drives me the most is to make sure everybody is mainly focused on customer service and, and that they're 100 percent happy. And I'll, I'll go the extra mile and make sure, you know, that I can with a, within reason. Love that. Absolutely. Well, thank you. So if somebody wants to connect with you, learn about your product services a little bit more or actually just really get into the get into the process, what's the best way for them to contact you? Uh, a couple different ways. Uh, first of all, our, our, uh, I call it our Green Bay number is 920-465-6689. Our Sturgeon Bay or Door County number is 920-743-3333. Our website is www.kinardheat.com or you can look for us at Kinard Heating and Cooling on Facebook also. Awesome. That social is so easy to go into, isn't it? So there's a lot of videos out there and, and a lot of videos out on our Facebook page. And uh, you can look back a little bit and uh, explains our, you know, explains our company and some of our, uh, our points of interest in the past too. 
Awesome. Love it. Well, thank you. Thank you for serving your, your team members, your community, for keeping us all comfortable and for taking your time to share what you're doing in business, Tom. Well, I really appreciate it. And I appreciate your time and uh, giving me the opportunity. Absolutely. Thanks. Have a good one. You have a great day.